My name is Seiju Hosari. How old are you? I became 36 years old this year. Okay. Tell us a little bit about your background. Okay, I am half Japanese, half Chinese, and I lived most of my childhood and adolescent years in Japan and um, until high school and I came to America to study uh, and then I stayed here. Why you choose America? Um, when I was in Japan um, I know growing up even at a young age I knew something was missing in my life and I lived there for 10 years with my parents and my brother and my sister I went to school like everybody else but I felt like I needed to look for something I didn't know what that was so I made the decision to leave home and when I after I finished high school I left um, for Europe and I traveled for about six months I hitchhiked and took the train I was just wandering around looking for something not knowing what it was and during my travel I met a lot of people and I realized that I was very naive very um, immature compared to many of the young people that I met in Europe I met a lot of travelers and I realized everybody had very strong opinions about something. They had beliefs, whatever it was, and they had they were able to speak about what their belief was. And I really realized that I had really nothing to say and I realized that I was very empty. I had really nothing. So I was looking for looking for something what could be my belief and uh, what I could stand for. So that made me decide to come to America to study because come uh, entering college in America is not too hard and you could study um, different subjects quite freely compared to Japan. So that's why I chose to came to, come to America. That was 1990. Meaning, how old are you at this time? I was 20. I was 19 in Europe. When I came to America, I was 20. Meaning what? When which age is he left Japan? 19. 19. Um, all my friends went to college in Japan, all my high school friends, but I couldn't go to college without knowing what I wanted to study. And in Japan, you have to decide what major you want to study before you decide to go to college. You have to choose it first. And for me, I couldn't do that because I really didn't know what I was interested in. And I felt like I needed to search first. So that's why I left the track from everybody else. At this time, what is your belief? Do you have any belief at this time? Are you Buddhist? Are you atheist? What is it? Okay, I was, my mother was, she calls herself a Buddhist. She has an altar in the house. She prays every morning, every evening, a lot. I watched her mom do that. So in the morning and at night, I would put my hands together and say good night or good morning. Um, next to her but that was it but I didn't really know what the belief was and I never thought about God or anything else you know, I never really thought about the life beyond um, no meaning at this time you consider yourself an atheist okay I heard that atheist is when you believe that there is no God but I guess for me I didn't believe that there was no God, but it just never occurred to me. I never thought about it, but I didn't deny. I didn't know. Meaning you can consider yourself at this time ignorant? Yes. Yes. Absolutely ignorant. Mm. 
Okay, you came to America. After you came to America, tell us a little bit about your journey in America. Okay, I went to college four years in Connecticut, State University of Connecticut. No, Southern Connecticut State University. And I studied different subjects. I took a liberal arts major, so which means you can take different classes and get a major. So I didn't really have anything specific that I was interested in, but I touched different subjects. I studied a little bit of philosophy, sociology, anthropology, and um, some religious courses. I was interested to see what was out there and what knowledge I could get. And I remember my senior year in college, I wrote a letter to my parents that I'm about to graduate. And I wrote to them that I learned a lot in college, but what I realized, what, I, what my final conclusion was that despite all the knowledge that is out there, that we as human beings really don't know anything. We don't have, we have very little facts that, um, we have very little facts. And the, f the fact that there's a huge unknown out there was more powerful to me that to know that we really, all the adults, they didn't know the truth. There was a lot of question marks. And that was my discovery in college. And what does this lead you to? So I, I finished college, but I was still searching. I really didn't find anything except the fact that we, we don't know. So I kept looking. I kept going on with my life. I moved to Miami. I got married. After, I got married with my so-called college sweetheart. We moved to Miami. We had a pretty good life there. It was hot and sunny, but I was still very, very empty. I didn't know why I was living. And um, even though we could have like fun moments, it was superficial. And deep down, I knew that I didn't have it. I didn't. I wasn't fulfilled. There was an emptiness in me. And but. I always, somehow, I had the feeling that I was going to find whatever that was missing. I felt like I could, I'm going to take my time, but I'm going to keep moving forward until I find whatever that was. And I was comfortable, for some reason I was comfortable that I was going to reach that. I don't know, I didn't know at the time what that was, but something that would make sense of everything to me. Because at the time, life didn't make sense to me. And um, marriage, I thought it was going to be a security for me, but it was not. It was a very insecure marriage for me. As I believe for most, most of people, they have an insecure marriage. Because it's not based on what it should be. And so, and then we moved back to New York. We moved to Connecticut, we moved to New York. I did move a lot. And I had different jobs. And, um, yes. And one day, okay, I landed. I always wanted to be a social worker. I don't, I don't know why, but I, I wanted to help people because I felt like, me, I was a very fortunate person. I had a good family. I had, I had no financial problems. I had no physical problems. I was very... I considered myself very lucky. I was thankful for that. And I knew that there were a lot of unfortunate people in the world, in society. So I wanted to know these people and to somehow know if I could help them. And that's how I landed a social, social worker uh, job in New York. And there I saw um, people humanity with such darkness I never thought that I would that I would know like what? okay um, people were very very lonely very lonely people and they were very broken people 
and um, but also the other thing I found out was that even though they were broken and dark they had some they were somehow believers of God some of them and that shocked me because I was thinking how can you be in such destitution you have no family nobody cares about you and you still believe and thank God and how could that be that made me wonder and um, that made me wonder <laughs>